Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. No, happy Wednesday. It is already Wednesday. The week is halfway over. How do we call it? Hump day, right? Hope everyone is doing great. I am doing a lot better today than I did yesterday. Yesterday after lunch, I cooked lunch. And as I was standing up cooking, I was starting to feel a little bit like, I don't know, like, oh, I don't know if I'm feeling so good. Went ahead and had lunch. And gradually it got just worse. And so I decided to wrap up work early around maybe 2.30 or so. My babysitter was here until four. So I just, you know, I thought like, oh, this is good. I can lay down and the twins are, you know, I don't have to carry anyone around. And I started laying down. I was, I felt so sick. Oh, well, a few hours later, turns out I had this full blown stomach flu the whole thing going on, you know what what goes on when you have that. And it was no fun. It was really horrible. It was violent for about, I don't know, just about three hours or so. And then it got a lot better. Then, you know, the vomiting stopped. It was not nice. And I feel a lot better today. So back to work normally. I mean, my stomach is still just a little bit. I'm eating here little pretzels, like something salty drank some tea. I actually did drink coffee now. I know I shouldn't have, but I'm so tired because I hardly got any sleep last night. Um, for some reason, also the twins, like they were, they were, like I hardly slept at all. Not because I didn't feel good, but because the twins were like, especially our boy, he was just so restless. So, but anyway, I came on today. Um, I actually had something else planned, but I had to change plans a little bit. I have actually something really cool going on in the future. Um, stay tuned. There are going to be live coaching sessions available. And that means you have an opportunity to apply for like a coaching session. It's going to be no charge. It's going to be free. And, but we're going to stream live to YouTube and Facebook. Um, you're going to have the opportunity just to have a coaching session. Now it is for singers who are a little advanced, you know, just, I want to make sure that we don't just work on complete beginner stuff, but really work maybe on some repertoire, working on refining some songs and, you know, we're talking about technical things, talking about performance wise, voice type, presentation, a lot of different things. But um, yeah, something went wrong with a tech apparently today. So um, we're just doing something else today. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, there's an element that singers often overlook. I can tell you a story. Back in college, when I started, I started a little late um, in comparison to a lot of other singers. I got started in my mid-20s. Now that's pretty late when it comes to singing and like wanting to become a professional opera singer. And the thing is that I was, I, I made such fast progress in comparison to a lot of other singing students. And here's why. Because I was a musician before I ever become, became a singer. Now, technically, I sang all my life. I had never had a lesson. My first lesson was when I ma majored in vocal performance at my music department at my college. Um, so that was my very first voice lesson ever. I didn't know anything about voice technique or like the technical terms. It was all Greek to me. But what I did know was a lot of the background like in music. I had played the piano since I was a child. I also played the flute. I wanted to become a professional flautist at some point. I went to conservatory for that. So I was very familiar like with sheet music, mu some, you know, a lot of aspects of music theory, like how to read things and what it means. But here's the thing. It's not just about reading sheet music. I think a lot of singers often forget that they're not just singers. Just because your instrument lives in your body doesn't mean you're not also a musician. You are definitely also a musician. So you have to treat like you have to treat learning how to sing just like tr learning another instrument. It is an instrument. You are creating music, right? So and if you're creating music, you need to kind of know how music works. And that's where music theory comes in. Now it all sounds often very dry. But when you actually apply it, I can tell you like back in school, music theory did sound like Greek to me. I did never understand the circle of fifths and like, why is that relevant? Why would I ever need this? I just listen and I know what's going on. Then later in college, when I majored in vocal performance, I actually had a teacher who just 
was so practical, like practically oriented. He taught all the theory, but then along with that, he did a, so he did so many practical examples. I totally understood what you know why things happen and why it is the way it is, and it made sense to me why it's so important, and it definitely is extremely important. So, for example, when you phrase, I always talk a lot about phrasing. You don't just want to sing through and treat every pitch with the same weight, with the same color. Like it's becoming very boring after a while, right? For you to sing and for someone to listen. So, but phrasing has a lot to do with the time signature and where the downbeat is. Now, when there's a syncopation, there is a different way of accentuating. There's a way to pace yourself. Now, tempo is important. Tempo changes, dynamics. These are all things that have a lot to do even with the the, mel the melodic flow, with the chord progressions, the harmonies that happen. There's always a tension and release. There are suspensions that then re have a release. There are... You know, there are effects. They have a lot, they have a lot to do with how you should sing through a phrase and through a song. So knowing the theory, like what is a syncopation? How how are you going to explain a syncopation when you talk to other musicians and to like a, a band leader or even other band members or choir members or understanding your choir director or any other setting when you're singing with an orchestra? When you're not literate in like actually understanding how our music system works, it does kind of strip you from that layer of depth. And you can only get that far. You could really go any, like a lot of very famous singers, they may be natural talents, but at some point, a lot of them play an instrument. And in order to play that instrument, you do have to know some kind of a, some level of the theory behind how music works like scales and key why is it this key and how can I tell what key it is just by looking at the sheet music how do I know how to play in or how to sing in the key of a where do I need to start then what's the starting point what are supposed the pitch is supposed to be what's the difference between a harmonic minor and a melodic minor and a natural minor scale And how does that affect the way I sing up and down the melody line? Those are all things that I think, you know, once you understand them, it just makes a lot more sense. And the truth is, it really elevates your level of musicianship and expressiveness because you can look at any performance by famous singers and you will see that everyone, ha like there's not one that's exactly like the other one. And that's because they interpret the music slightly differently. So even when you go, just, just look at like a classical piece. Let's just say we are looking at <laughs> Rachmaninoff like, or not, like a Tchaikovsky piano concerto. Is it number five? Da, 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 da. It's like the most beautiful, my favorite piano concerto. You watch one world-renowned pianist like Lang Lang, for example, compared to another one, and they will play it so differently. Now, why is that? They are all within those parameters of like, they are actually playing the pitches correctly. They also interpret it right, like the phrasing wise, but there is only when you know that kind of a depth of what is possible, what is permissible, and what how how much freedom do you have to express yourself How much can you deviate from what's on the page? And what is your freedom as an artist? Understanding what's really relevant in the music and understanding the framework that you operate in is going to just elevate your singing skills to the next level. I just feel that you feel really like a dummy when you talk to other musicians as a singer and you have no clue. Like you always have to ask your guitarist like, They ask you, so what key are you sing it in? And you have to say, I have no clue. I don't know. What's the key? What, what's the difference between C and G? I don't know. <laughs> and then they say, how much do you need it transposed? And you're like, I don't know. A third? What's a third? What's a fifth? What's a, what's a tritone? I have no idea. Or you say, that, that pitch is hard for me to get. And they tell you, just listen. This is, it's the dominant. And you think... What's the dominant? 
these are all things that can help you in your singing to understand, like for to kind of put things in a framework. And it's almost like reading. In the beginning, you learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You learn every single letter and you learn how to draw them. It's a very tedious work. After a while, you start putting letters together and you read entire words. And after that, you're starting to read entire sentences. Now, but here's what happens after you practice that a lot. You don't even read the letters anymore. You see a word and you recognize it, even if you haven't seen it before. Um, you know those texts that they scramble letters, but your brain still interprets it and your your brain sees it correctly. That's why we often overlook typos when you know while we write or while we type, because our brain still sees it. It's it's so easy to overlook it because we're so used to seeing it correctly. We're so used to this framework. This is what it's supposed to be. And sometimes like our range is like, this is what it is, right? And in music, it's very similar. After a while, when you become familiar with these principles, it just starts making sense. And it's almost like, I always feel like this is like a bunch of drawers that are like my brain can pull. And nowadays, when I listen to a piece of music that I'm trying to learn, it's not all about oh, I just have to repeat over and over again because it's just like new and I have never seen or hear, heard it before. Now it's like it opens this drawer. Like in some way, shape or form, it's like, okay, the phrasing is four and four. <laughs> there's a half cadence and then there's a perfect authentic cadence. You don't know what this is right now, but this helps me remember things so quickly because I can literally put it, oh, this is this drawer and this drawer. Everything that happens in music repeats all the time except you're mixing it up it's like a book you read a book that book is unique but it's all made up made up of the letters that you once learned that are the same in every single book except you combine them differently to make up different words different sentences and then it's a whole new creation but the elements that it consists of it's all the same in every single book in every newspaper anything that's written the same letters and in music, it's the same. You know, it's like, it's the same. There are a specific amount of, like there are a certain amount of key signatures and it all happens within that framework. And it always follows the pattern. A major key will always follow the pattern of the, the scale going like whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone. It's always that pattern. And there are different modes like Lydian and Phrygian, not maybe so important for anyone who doesn't maybe do older music and wants to do something really like spaced up. <laughs> um, but these are very, very, very relevant. If you want to dive deeper, next week I'm starting a music theory class for singers that's going to go on for four weeks for an entire month where I walk you through all the elements of music theory that from the perspective of a singer. So a lot of, I know there are music theory courses out there where you can learn theory but it's just very general. I'm looking at it from the perspective of a singer. Like I help you memorize, memorize intervals so you kind of memorize what they sound like. You can just have like a, you know, what song is this? This song has this interval going up or going down. I help you understand all the things that are important to, you know, to you as a singer. Number one, so that you can not be illiterate anymore about music but you can talk about it. You can explain yourself. It's much easier to say, oh, it's syncopated or, oh, it's not, it's stuple meter, but it's swing. You, this is a very easy way to describe something to your fellow musicians and vice versa. If they want to explain something to you and they say, okay, um, it's a pickup note. You know what that is. Well, that's probably a term a lot of people know, but what's the downbeat? What's the pickup note? What's the subdivision? What is the dotted? 16th or something like that oh it comes on the 2e knowing these things um, will just make you so much more knowledgeable and you, you you're gonna sound and look a lot more educated as a singer don't be that singer who's like has no clue about anything about like what music is right even when you're natural and that's awesome it really does add the other layer so my class I put the link here in the description you can sign up we start next week uh, Wednesday on the 24th. Is that the 24th? Yeah, 24th. Next Wednesday, we start. Um, 
97 bucks for the four weeks. We also have weekly Zoom calls where I do a Q&A where you can ask me anything and you will have lifetime access to all the course materials. And you get access for this month to a community of singers where you could just mingle and talk. This is this is the community excuse me. This is the community of my online singing school. So you could just for that month you can mingle. I would love to see you on the inside. Now if you in the comments, let me read the comments now just a bit. I'm really excited about this class. I ran it once I think in February, way back um, at the beginning of the year, it was so cool. We had like 50 people in there. It was a lot of fun. The Q&As were really cool and we had great questions and I'll run it one more time this year. Um, and I don't know if I'll run it again in the future. I kind of want to move away from this, like a lot of the one month classes because I have a lot, I have my hands full with my other programs. I have my online singing school. I have my vocal mastery lab. So every day, um, pouring my time into that. Um, probably the music theory class might be the last time I'm running this in this style where we actually do the live element of the, the weekly meetings. Um, if you join now, you also will have access to the monthly Zoom coaching call, which is actually normally for the online singing school students, but you can be part of that for the month and just kind of check what, what we do and kind of be part of that. You have an opportunity to be coached personally um, by me. And also you can be part of the accountability meeting. We have an accountability coach, CJ. She meets once a month also with everyone in the online singing school. And um, if you want to join there, she gives you tips about how to get your goals, you know, how to, how to meet your goals, how to be more productive and mindset wise, like how to stay motivated and all that stuff. She will hold you accountable. She'll check in with you. It's like, did you, did you reach your goal? Um, yeah, all of that. If you register before we start next uh, next Wednesday, okay, I'm gonna read your. So Pat, welcome, operator. Um, thanks for your support. Just got the baritone solo in Foray's Requiem. Awesome, I love Foray, and the Requiem is just—it's such beautiful music. Foray was one of my. Like I played a foray piece once. It was it was a flute piece called Marceau. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> like message is still on. It changed my life. It was a flute piece accompanied by a piano. The piano accompaniment was, was so simple but beautiful. And the the flute part was just for me it was like, oh, this is such a beautiful piece of music. And then of course, like a lot of foray, you know, I did a lot of other different foray stuff. The syrinx, for example, there's a lot of flute stuff. So it's really, really cool. No, that was DBC. <laughs> Sometimes I confuse them. I don't know why DBCs are so different. Maybe because they're both French. Okay. Um, Chucky, do you have also videos in German? I do not. When I started this YouTube channel... I decided I was going to do it in English, number one, because I lived in the States for many years, so English is very easy for me. And I also really wanted to reach an international audience and not just in German. And I just don't have the bandwidth right now to produce anything in German. Um, no, my team and I right now, we are focused fully on the English speaking market um, and the audience. So no German videos right now. But if you were out ever go going to book a session with me or join any of my programs that include individual coaching, I would totally do it in German. I have a bunch of German students in my vocal mastery lab, so we always talk in German. Also wir können auch Deutsch reden, aber das geht halt nicht hier auf YouTube, <laughs> weil das sonst niemand verstehen würde. Alrighty. Pat says, yippee. <laughs> Now I forgot the context. Um, beyond this sacrosanct breeze. You're amazing, Freya. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Anonymous says, Hi, Freya. Please teach us how to always sing on pitch. I have a bunch of videos about how to sing on pitch. There are different approaches. I'm actually going to probably make some more videos soon about singing on pitch 
there are a few very interesting things that I've learned over the past few years about students that had some issues about singing on pitch because there are many different causes of like, why would you not be on pitch? Um, and I want to share more of this. Oh, it started raining. I was just looking outside and how it started to rain. Ah, it's like really dark outside right now. It was so, like a week ago, it was still so warm. Or like less than a week or last Saturday, one week ago, it was like so warm. And now it cooled down so much. Um, but let me continue reading your comments. Um, I tap into the vi vibratos. I learn based on trial and error of sounds. Reading music feels dull to me. Yeah, you know what? It does feel dull to you when you don't, when you have not discovered all the wonderful things that are to be discovered inside of sheet music. I know a lot of times you see this and it's like, it's just a bunch of black stuff on a page. Now, when you look a little closer, you see a lot of wonderful things. I see harmonies. I see a melody. I see where there are tied notes. Now, in this case, this sheet music doesn't have so much information, but it's a nice visual. And especially in classical music, I can see a lot of how I'm supposed to interpret things. You know, when is it legato? When is it when when is there an accent? It's very relevant. It always gets me when someone cl sings classical music and pays zero attention to the composer's remarks. The composer basically, I mean, how are you going to explain how to sing the piece? You're going to have to write it somehow. A lot of pop music sometimes like th there's not that much happening, maybe dynamically or accentuation wise or phrasing wise. That is like the you could be so many different ways of doing it. Yeah, but even then, you know, how are you going to tell someone, this is a short pitch, this is a long pitch, you connect this, there's a glissando, there's a portamento. I mean, how are you going to know this? You can listen, but even when you listen, everyone's going to sing it slightly differently, right? So you have to kind of know what is it actually that's written on the page and what is it that is just, just the interpretation part of it because you don't want to just copy someone else. Really, in order to make things your own, it's very helpful to read mu sheet music to not even start listening to anyone. A lot of times I will just open up a songbook. I have never listened to the piece of music. I just explore the songbook and start playing away. And then I discover a piece that I'm like, wow, I'm hearing it for the first time as I'm playing and singing it. And I, it's like this, wow, I just discovered this piece of music that... I'm hearing the first time as I'm playing and singing it. That's very magical, I have to tell you. This is a magical feeling. I do this sometimes, not so much since the twins have, were born. I always used to do this. I always have like these songbooks that there are a lot of songs in there that I don't know yet. And it's wonderful just to explore that and to, to be the first one ever that sings it like when it comes to me hearing it, right? Hello from Phoenix, Arizona. I bet your weather is warmer than it is here. It's really getting to, to be fall here. Um, Andre Music Live. Hello. Yeah. I love all of your teaching content. Thank you so much, Andre. Natural nature of beauty. Good to see you. Yeah. Great. Great to have you here. Um, can you review my advanced warm up techniques? Or making a song your own. You know, this is something, if you want to apply for the live coaching, let me look it up. Why do I not know the, why do I not know the link right off the bat? You can apply for one of my live, next live coaching sessions that will be streamed right here to YouTube and Facebook. And just be coached by me, free of charge just kind of as an example for everyone else to kind of see what's going on. Um, wait, let me tell you the link. <laughs> oh, my team makes like the page. Okay, so it's masteryourvoice.tv slash live coaching. Live coaching, slash live coaching. That's the application you can apply for the live coaching session that will be streamed here. Um, again, 
I would like this to be someone like we could actually work on a piece of music, someone who's a little more advanced to show something. Um, okay, let's see. Is it Diab? When is the last day to sign up and pay the fee? The music theory class starts next Wednesday. So technically the last day to sign up and still jump on the board is next Tuesday. Um, yeah, that's the last day you can join because we actually have our first live Q&A meeting next Wednesday as we kick off the class. Um, and I just want to make sure that everyone gets plugged in there. And that's why you should sign up the day before at the latest. Hi, Celia. Good to see you here. Hey, CJ. Um, would love to meet you in an accountability group. Yeah, um, CJ is here. She's the accountability coach inside of the online singing school. But again, you can take, um, you can participate if you sign up or when you sign up, you're, you're going to do it, right? When you sign up for the Music Theory for Singers class. Yeah, actually, today's our monthly meeting starting soon. Oh, yes, that's right. Today is the accountability meeting. You start in about 25 minutes, right? And I'm going to wrap this up before that. So if anyone here is watching who is also in the online singing school, can go ahead and join you, CJ. Um, Andre says, I appreciate your loving and caring soul. Oh, thank you so much. You are amazing at beautiful. Love the family pics that you post online. Oh, yeah, I sometimes do that. The twins are getting so big. They're now 21, 21 months. They're starting to talk. They're, you know, starting to repeat a lot of words. And it's so sweet because they are starting to now be able to articulate what they want. So, you know, like I always ask them, like, do you want this? He's like, no, no, no. Do you want that? And without pointing, you know, anywhere, it's just like, you want pretzels? No. Nah. You want cereal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just so sweet how they can now start articulating themselves. I can't wait till they can actually fully talk because that makes life so much easier when you can actually communicate. It must be frustrating for a little kid that doesn't really talk yet because no one understands what you want, what you want. Because all you can do is like, ah, ah, ah. all you can do is like scream, right? It's like, ah, 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 ah. it's not what I want. <laughs> all righty. Mm. Mrs. Velvet Violet, love that name. Sometimes I think when you try, you can read sheet music like a novel. Yeah, to me, it's like discovering a song like that. I, I just, I just love that. Seeing bar lines, I think that really helps. Seeing the phrasing, sometimes there are, um, you know, the arches. That to me visually just helps. Also in sheet music, this is a big thing I always preach. Take notes, take notes, take notes, and take more notes. When you are in the phase of practicing a piece and working on it deep, take notes. When you're rehearsing it, when you're like working with others, take tons of notes because I guarantee, I absolutely guarantee, I don't, I've been doing this for a long time. I guarantee that there's no way I'm going to remember everything I talked about or I, I thought about that I want to do next time I go through it. Take notes. I recently had a hysterectomy. Oh, that's, that's, I know that's quite a procedure. How do you rehab the, the coastal muscle? I am finding that it is difficult to balance the diaphragm with these muscles when I work to create the pressure. I can't really I don't have any experience in that. I don't know which muscles would be affected. Um, I think what is important, though, is to really think about it as like deep core breathing. When I, you know, after I gave birth to the twins, I felt like my core was shot. Really, I had this uh, diastasis recti, like the coning because the ab muscles separate so much. What helped me the most to regain stability was deep core breathing, meaning you don't just kind of think of support or like using your ab muscles as like, ugh. it's not the outside. It's really this, this very controlled breathing mechanism and the continuous 
engagement of of like that mechanism that whole that just that core continuous core engagement as you go about your daily life and i think the same goes for pelvic floor continuously engaging you know not it's like i think kegels are great and stuff like that but i don't think really it does as much as continuously engaging i hope that makes sense it's like you don't just do a bunch of exercises and then not do anything for the rest of the day what you do for your core and pelvic floor muscles that helped me the most was to kind of every day get in the habit of being in the mode of engaging so whenever i sit or breathe i don't slouch i try to really engage in my posture to not let all the muscles loose all the time hope that makes sense and again, I don't know anything about hysterectomy and muscles that would be affected. So I have no idea. I couldn't tell you anything. Um, compression without becoming too heavy. Yeah, definitely. And again, support isn't anything. It's like ugh, you suddenly push. It's this continuous baseline. And then it gives and takes and it gives and takes. Martha, hello. Um, love your live YouTubes. Oh, thank you. Um, awesome. Okay. Any other questions? I did just want to connect you. Like really, I really hope you're going to join my music theory for singers class. It's 97 bucks. So I think it's an investment that is so worth it as a singer. If you feel like you have deficits and you feel often like when you're in the choir or singing with your band or any any uh, anything else that you do musically and you sometimes feel like you don't like whatever what everyone else talks else talks about you're like I don't know I think I'm missing something <laughs> might be because you need to just talk maybe just catch up a little bit on the theory part and you know what I don't even like the th I don't like the term theory even because it's not a theory it's it's absolutely practical you know, counting is not theory. How to count correctly? When are you coming in? That is so crucial. If you don't know how to count and to know when you come in, then it all sounds messed up. And it's very embarrassing when you don't know when you en when, when you enter. That can be very embarrassing. So being very educated and sound in that it's like yeah I know how to count I know how to do subdivisions I know how to come in even when there's complex rhythm rhythms I can draw it out I can figure it out and then I know when to do it I know what to listen for what cues to listen for okay um Let's see. Oh, I actually, hold on just a second. I, I, I actually do need to get my reading glasses real quick. Where are they? Here they are. This window. Oh, yes, that's so much better. It's just a reading thing. All right. Um, I... Hola, me gustan tus clases, pero no entiendo en el inglés. No sé si puedes poner la traducción en castellano. Castellano. <laughs> Sorry, I don't really speak Spanish. I under, you know, I I understand what you just wrote, but yeah, I'm sorry. I like I said, you know, I don't watch Spanish videos because I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> and I, I had to decide. There is a language that I'm working in here and it is English. I chose to work in English. And yes, I realize that there is so much content available on the internet that's in English and that not everyone knows English. And like here in Germany too, there's a lot of content in German, but there's infinitely more in English. So when you want to find resources, oftentimes you have to start searching in English. Will you have another in-person workshop in Germany next year? Mm. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I might. Andre, are you like an advanced musician? Because I, I ran this class um, a couple times this year. I did um, the workshop, the weekend workshop. 
That is an intensive, and it is for singers who are very serious. Now I can take this off. It is for singers who are very serious, you know, about making their singing a success. <laughs> and this could mean different things. Like really, those who want to make money, who want to make more money from singing, and who want to turn this kind of into a business and into something that is more than just singing in the shower or at home or like, you know, once a week in a choir. That's what that workshop is all about. I have no idea if I'm going to run it next week. Uh, no, next, next, next week for sure not. Next year. <laughs> but here's the thing, Andre. If you are interested in that workshop, just send me an email to fria at info... Um, Raya at masteryourvoice.tv and tell me more about you. And here's the thing. If you're very interested, because I really only take a handful of people, if you're very interested in that and you really want to do this workshop, uh, it was so cool with the people that so far have done it. Really, really cool singers that I've met there. Really cool artists. Um, send me an email. Tell me more about yourself and your goals. And if I feel like this is a good fit and we could, you know, this is good for you and we think we want to do this, then we pick a date that suits both of us and you'll be the first participant. <laughs> and then I will start announcing it and ev anyone else who wants to join. And I think I'll take up to five people, no more than that. Um, then we could do that. Um, it's very true. You make good points about sheet music. I should definitely work on that. My musical path has always been on my own terms and more of a feeling. And that's great. You know, you, you, I feel in order to be a great musician, you really need, in order to be the best musician, I really think you need both parts. You need the logical, analytical, mathematical part. It's very important. In music, you need accuracy. And that's very mathematical. Ask a pianist. I have two friends of mine. They're very good friends of mine. And they are mathematicians and pianists. One has a doctorate in mathematics, but he's also a professional musician. He kind of, you know, now he works again in mathematics professionally. <laughs> um, he does music on the side, but for years he did music as his main job as a pianist and band leader. Um he switches back and forth. <laughs> and I have another friend, my best uh, friend and pianist, Helge. He's also, he has a degree in mathematics and in piano. He is a pianist and mathematician because piano is really very technical. And as a singer, it behooves you to learn more about the technical side of things. To have more accuracy. You really do have more accuracy when you know really how to count and how to identify a key signature and a tempo marking and what that means. What's the difference between a 2-4 and a 4-4? Four, four, and why does it matter? I mean, basically you count fourths, but why does it matter if it's two fourths in a, in a measure or four? It's the accentuation and the phrasing that will change. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't really speak. Um, I don't really speak Spanish, like I said, but I have sung in Spanish quite a bit. Um, you know, when you study... Uh, vocal performance. You have to actually sing in uh, English, German, French, Latin, Italian, and Spanish. So you have diction classes for all of those languages. I didn't need to take German diction because I am German. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but you know, actually, that's not true. I studied in the States, so I didn't take the German diction class. But even in the States, they do take English diction because there is a difference between just speaking English and singing. Because in singing, especially classical music, you want to have impeccable diction. And there are a lot of rules that apply to singing to make it very accurate. And here we are again, even about the language part. It's very technical. Someone who just speaks by feeling will not be as good as someone who actually meticulously studied grammar. I will argue that forever. German is a difficult language um, when it comes to grammar. And when I hear someone speak, you know, inaccurately when it comes to pronunciation and um, also inaccurately when it comes to grammar, it's actually hard to understand. Now, 
just about English, one story. There is a, there always used to be, um, the, the cruise ships where I worked, the band was always, um, Ukrainian musicians. And so they spoke, they spoke Russian and Ukrainian and it was so cute. There was like, I've been on the sheep for three months. I'm like, really? You're riding sheep? Uh. But there's a big difference between sheep and ship and sheet and shit, right? Big difference in meaning. Just a small difference in un enunciation, but it already ch it changes the word and the meaning. And that's why it's like, I, I don't know why, but this kind of stuff really triggers me nowadays when someone isn't accurate in their enunciation. I'm not perfect by any means. I probably have like, I sound German sometimes when I speak English and I make mistakes, but I don't know why. It's like when I sometimes hear people talk and I'm like, this is like, this is something you can totally fix. Why don't you just fix it? Why don't you just practice the sound of this? And then you could like elevate your, the way people understand you so much better. <laughs> um, awesome, Andre, you have sent the application for the live coaching. Does that start? No, the live coaching session is something that will be happening. Um, like I think maybe twice a month, I will do these here like this. I was supposed to do this today, but we had some tech issues. Um, the music theory class for singers that'll start on the 25th. I actually have a live coaching session scheduled for next week. Um, that spot is already filled. We already have someone for that. We have a bunch of applications, but it's okay. You sent, you sent your application. Uh, my assistant will review it. And then, you know, we'll go from there. If she thinks that we have some criteria, um, you probably get them the automated email already that is sent out after you apply, um, kind of showing you what happens next and what the criteria are that we, you know, we base our selection on. And uh, yeah, that'll be cool. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll be here on the live with me um, in the next few weeks. Awesome. We will have one session next week. Oh, is that you, CJ? Ruth. Oh, it's Ruth116. Oh, it's a scripture. That That's your name. Um, we will have one session next week, but the student has already been selected. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, go ahead and apply. And you did that. Um, would like to join the workshop. I'm an advanced singer. Oh, awesome. So now we're talking about all these different things. I just want to clarify. I have a music theory for singers class. That starts next week on October 24th. That is a month-long class that we have weekly meetings for, like a weekly live Zoom Q&A. That's the Music Theory Singers. It's 97 bucks. Now, we're also talking here in the chat about my in-person workshop. My in-person workshop. It's the Find Your Voice workshop. CJ, if you're still here, can you try to find that link? I think it is masteryourvoice.tv slash find your voice. No, no. Now I know what it is. It's called masteryourvoice.tv tr slash true voice. Can you verify that for me, CJ? It's true voice slash true voice. Now that is my in-person workshop here in my studio. That is on a Saturday and a Sunday. I currently don't have any dates, but if you are interested... Um, if you're interested, Martha, and you are someone who wants to be professional or you are professional or you want to, you know, want to start making money or make more money with your singing, we go like over the course of a weekend, we dive really deep. It's an investment. Um, but we dive really deep into the whole package. What is the package? What is your branding that includes your voice type? Like what kind of repertoire should you sing? You need to have like a, you know, basically selling yourself as a singer 
it, it needs to be like a brand. Just think of the most famous singers. They are a brand. Think of Sia. Think of Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga does a lot of different things, but she is a brand because she's known for the things she does best. It's a lot of what we're going to talk about in that workshop to figure out where do you need to go? How do you go about it? What's the strategy in order to really reach that level of success to where you can sustain a living and be successful with it? So it's definitely for advanced singers who have, um, you know, a certain amount of technique under their belt that can say, I'm at this level where I could really make something out of it. Okay, I'm trying to read here. I've been singing and doing rhyme schemes with poetry in the form of rap. That's cool. I truly enjoy it and feel it in my soul. I synchronize it with deep meditation and calisthenics. Calisthenics. Ooh, wow. Thank you for all your insight. That is cool. Okay, let me try to imagine that. So poetry, th that's a lot. L let me digest this for a minute here. Poetry in the form of rap. Okay, I can imagine that. And then you synchronize it with deep meditation. Okay, so you're doing poetry as your rap and you synchronize that with deep meditation. You, you mean at the same time or you also do deep meditation before you do these poetic raps and calisthenics that that is physical right it's, it's like oh, very i know what calisthenics are that's really cool I'm trying to visualize that I, I would love to see a sample of that or hear well you wouldn't really have to see it to get the whole picture <laughs> um i've been taking your advice from you you have a beautiful voice. Oh, thank you. Yes, Martha. Go ahead and check out that page. Uh, Master Your Voice. Yeah, True Voice. CJ just posted that link. Read through that page. And if you feel like that is something you really want to do, reach out to me and send me an email. During copy singing different voices, I can't find out my own voice. Mm -hmm. If I try, it's horrible because of I'm used to have an original, but alone is difficult. Are there techniques to find my own voice? One really important part would be before you even listen to, you know, before you ever listen to any original singer, if you had sheet music and you knew how to read, maybe somewhat, you know, that then you could just explore it on your own. Here's, here's one tool that I find very helpful. Record yourself often. Record yourself as much as you can and listen back. Record yourself all the time. Um, here's how I study my songs. I start by maybe listening to the original a few times just so kind of I get the hang of what, what I'm supposed to do. Like what, it, what is the sound supposed to be? Like what's the style of it? But then I wean myself off of listening to that too many times. And then I start recording myself singing that piece of music. Maybe I'll find a backing track. Or in my case, oftentimes I'll just accompany myself with a piano. Or I'll record a rehearsal session that I have with, you know, the band or what, whoever I'm playing this piece with. And I record my own voice. Because that really helps me hear like, okay, I like this. I didn't like that. I want to change this. I want to, like, this sounds awesome. I want to keep this. And so it really helps me kind of be aware of what my sounds my voice sounds like because the truth is you only hear the true voice that really comes out when you record yourself. As you're singing, you perceive yourself very differently than what actually comes out and what others hear because your ears are inside of your skull and your voice, like the vibrations are different. So you hear yourself differently. Learning um, how to perceive, even as you're singing, to learn what is the actual sound of my voice. A lot of recording of yourself helps you find the true sound of your voice. So again, I always, I always tell people like, don't try to sound like anyone. You do emulate their technique. If, you know, if like if they sing in falsetto, try to sing in falsetto. 
um, if they sing strong chest voice and belt, do that to reflect the style of the song. But the timbre should be your voice. You don't try to sound exactly like the voice color of, like, let's say, Amy Winehouse, because you're never going to sound like her. But also, um, you know, no singer would ever sound like you. You are very unique. And that's cool because, you know, it, it goes both directions. You are never going to sound like that other singer. But that other singer is also never going to sound like you. And no one will. And that's your unfair advantage. That's a lot of what we talk about also in my workshop, that weekend workshop for advanced singers. It's a lot about finding your unfair advantage. Like what makes you truly unique to where, like that's your brand. That's like the thing. It's like, ah, no one, no one does that. And even if someone does that, they don't do it like you do. I know a lot of people do YouTube videos. And, but probably no one does them exactly like I do. And I don't do them like, I don't do it like any other YouTuber, right? Everyone has their own approach and people are drawn to you as an artist because they like your vibe. They like your personality. They like your voice. Yes, you do have to have a certain level of, again, we come back to accuracy and technique in order to sound good and refined. But beyond that, there are so many more layers, you know, it's not enough just to sound good and to have a really beautiful voice. Totally not enough. At the same time, there are a lot of singers who made it big time that don't, maybe aren't arguably not the best singers in the world, but they have something very unique about them. There's a lot of Spanish going on because I know CJ, you speak Spanish. Hola. <laughs> Qué lindo, Luki. Gusto de tenaria aquí con nosotros. Do you have any advice on for our Arabic singing? Um, I cannot coach you in Arabic. I don't know any Arabic. My daughter has a friend and they speak Arabic in their family. <laughs> no, um, but I can tell you one thing. It doesn't matter whether it's Indian classical music or Chinese opera. Or Arabic singing, the, the human voice and the way it works is the same no matter what genre you sing. You just kind of have to listen for what is the sound. Is it more a softer, you know, like Chinese opera has a different sound. It doesn't project as much as maybe you want to do for a Wagner opera. <laughs> Don't need the big voices like that. It's a whole, it's a whole different style. And then Indian classical music also, it's more about intimacy and um, beauty, not so much about, you know, whoa, showing off, different way of showing off maybe. <laughs> so, um, yes. Oh, bye bye, CJ. Yes. I need to actually wrap it up because then everyone can go to the accountability meeting who is part of the online singing school. All right, everyone. Oh, danke sehr. Bitte schön, gern geschehen. Uh, if, if you want to talk to me in German, uh, you could always write me an email in German. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone. It's been almost an hour, so I actually didn't plan for it to go that long. But thanks everyone for hanging out. No, I can take these off. It's just the comments are so much easier. Like literally, oh, it's just a, it's, it's a part of, I, I hate that, like getting older. I, I hate that stereotypical thinking, kind of like, oh, I'm getting older. Yes. I do need reading glasses for the small print and it's okay. Um, and a lot of people commented they actually like the look of the glasses. These are literally like three euro glasses. Like I bought five of them and they're like distributed in the house, except when the twins are around, I cannot put these on. They are, they're going crazy over these. They want to like steal them and bend them and break them. So it's like, when they are around, I have to do my, my phone like this. I have to really back up in order to see. All right, everyone has a, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. And the plan is next week around the same time here, go live with an actual live coaching session. Be blessed. Bye-bye.